Hi there, hope you're well. In this tutorial, we will conduct experiment 1 from chapter 2, that is analysis of PRNU and SVN patterns for some sample images and sequence of frames. So I just want to show you what noise patterns look like. So this here is the code that will be used. So you can see there are two parts to this code. The first part will be used to obtain PRNU patterns for a single frame, for a single image. And the second part will be used to obtain noise patterns for a series of frames or a video sequence. So let's start with some sample images acquired from different cell phones. And uh, let me show you what the PRNU and SPN components in these images look like and how to obtain them. So let's start with this image. Suppose this is our sample image. So to obtain the PRNU patterns from this simple image, there we go. These are the PRNU patterns for the sample image. Now you'll see there's a lot of noise in this image. This is pattern noise, which is uh, a characteristic of the acquisition device. And now you'll notice that if we were to obtain SPN for the same image, there would have been a lot less noise component. Let me show you. Let's obtain SPN for the same image. And this is what SPN looks like for the sample image. So you'll notice a lot less noise component and you're actually able to see the outline of the object in the resultant SPN. In the same way, we can obtain noise patterns, both, both PRNU and SPN, for different kinds of images with different levels of scene complexity. Like here we have another image. Let's obtain PRNU and SPN for this image. Let's first obtain PRNU. Here we have PRNU for this image. Now let's obtain SPN. There we have it. On the left, we have PRNU patterns. On the right, we have SPN patterns for the same image. And you can notice the difference as far as the amount of noise is concerned. You'll also notice that noise patterns, both PRNU and SPN, depend on the scene complexity. So if we had another sample image, like this one, with a different kind of setup, let's obtain PRNU patterns and SPN patterns for this image. First PRNU. These are PRNU patterns. Now let's obtain SPN patterns for the same image. So there we have it SPN, PRNU, and the sample image. We can obtain noise patterns for sequence of frames as well, for video sequences as well. So here we have a sample video. Let me show you. So this is a simple video acquired using a cell phone. So let's see what its PRNU patterns look like. These here are the frames for this video. 
these will be used to obtain the noise patterns. We'll use the second part of the code. Now this video has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. So we make the necessary adjustments to the code. As the width and the height, we put down 1920 and 1080. This video also has 889 frames, which is a lot. Uh, but for the sake of this demonstration, we'll only consider a few frames. Otherwise, it will take a very long time to compute the patterns, considering that the video has high resolution. If the video had low resolution, then uh, the time it would take to process 800, 900 frames would not be that long. But given the high resolution of the video, uh, 889 frames will take a lot of time. So just for the sake of this demonstration, uh, we'll consider, let's say, 300 frames. Only 300 frames. In reality, however, it's a good idea to use as many frames as possible. The more, the better. All right. So after making the necessary adjustments to this code, we can now run it and obtain the noise patterns. It will take a little time, so we wait. So here we have it. This is the noise residue, and this is PRNU for the video that I just showed you. These are the inherent noise patterns of the camera used to acquire this video. Now you'll notice, as we discussed in chapter 2, because of the relative simplicity of the scene depicted in the video itself, the noise patterns are relatively simpler. We can obtain similar noise patterns for reference videos as well. As discussed in chapter 2, reference videos are simply just flat field videos, that is, videos of a uniformly lit surface with no scene details like a video of a white wall, or something like that. Uh, here we have a flat field video. As you see, this is just a video of a blank wall. No scene details, very low complexity. These are the frames of the video, which we'll use to compute the PRNU patterns, and they will look something like this. Again, the resolution of the video is the same, 1920 by 1080, and it has a total of 609 frames. Again, we don't need to use so many frames, just for the sake of this demonstration. So let's again just use 300 frames and obtain the noise patterns for this video. Here we have the noise patterns for this flat field video and you can see no scene details whatsoever. These are the PRNU patterns. And so when there is no scene content in the given video, there is no scene content in the resultant noise patterns. And all of this discussion and the reasons for these kinds of patterns will become clear in Chapter 2 of Module 2. Now, let's examine the noise components of a more complex video. Something like this. So this is just a sample video, a random sample video, but has this video has high scene complexity. Let's obtain the noise patterns for this video. These are the frames for the video. 
and this video has a resolution of 320 by 240 so we'll make the necessary adjustments to the code and this video has a total of 583 frames let's use all of them this won't take a lot of time because this video has low resolution so 583 frames can be computed rather quickly all right so this is what we get this is simply the noise residue as discussed in chapter 2 and this is PRLU and you can see that it's contaminated with a lot of scene details because again the video had high scene complexity but in the regions of uh, this image where there is less scene content like these areas or these areas we can see some characteristic noise patterns everywhere else the scene complexity is too much to actually make out any underlying noise patterns but in the areas where the scene is relatively smooth so we can notice the noise patterns and this is how we obtain noise patterns for sample images and videos uh, naturally by changing the type of the filter being used to obtain the noise patterns like here I've only shown you uh, the results obtained using Wiener filters and in this case median filters uh, but we can use a variety of filters and depending on which filter we are using the resultant PRNU and SPN patterns will appear different uh, so that's it for this tutorial in the next one we will examine the unique nature of these noise patterns um, and see how source camera identification can be performed by comparing noise patterns.